Okay, welcome to part six. Uh, we've pretty much finished our layout, or the, I guess the main structure of our layout here. We've got our tables built. Remember, this they're kind of like two by fours. They're there to uh, contain and to help us lay out our content that we're going to put in. We've got this little sample page made, and I'm working on this mockup.html page. Uh, you can see open here. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the last tutorial, I was trying to show you the option of being able being able to have your layout center inside your visitors browser. The default is that it's aligned to the left. Um, and not that big a deal to do. Uh, the thing that I need to do is to I can do this a couple of ways, but a quick simple way is it's, it's just to tell each table to center. So if I click inside the first one uh, where my banner is, come down to the uh, to my HTML breadcrumb trail here, click on table, go to align center, go down to the next table, click inside of it, select table, uh, align center. You can see the default is align left, so it says default in there. So I'm going to click on the inside the next area, so I'm inside this content area here, and go select that table, tell it to a align to the center, and now I just need to do the footer. So click inside that table, click on the table tag, and align to the center. And let's save that and preview it in the browser and see if that is functioning. Okay, so when I pull this up in the browser, you can see that now instead of having a giant margin down one side, that margin is divided up. And if that browser was a different size, let me just resize it, you can see how it is centering itself there in the browser. Um, so pretty easy to do. I just have to tell each one of the four tables um, to center. Now I could have done something similar with CSS, but right now we're just worrying about um, getting the basics down here. So um, that is working. Now I'm going to uh, show you a couple other things to help you control what this page looks like. Um, I'm going to go back here to this page properties button to look at a couple of the options here. So um, you can see I've put this text that I that has shown up out here on the page. It's the default, so you can see it's black, it's Times New Roman, and it's the size that you're seeing. So that that default is happening automatically. We're not having to tell it to do that. That's just the default. So if I want something else to be the default, I can come up here in my page properties. And you can see the different options I have here. You can see I've, I've already changed the, the background here. Um, if I open this up, you can see the other uh, fonts that are quickly available here. Um, you know, if I want an Arial look, a sans serif font, so I can just choose Arial here. And um, you can see there's Arial, comma, Helvetica, comma, uh, comma, sans serif. That's just a little default, so if my visitor doesn't have Arial, then it'll use Helvetica. If they don't have Helvetica, then they'll use Sans Serif. So maybe I want Verdana. I can select that. And if I just want to see what it looks like, I'm going to check uh, Push Apply. Now, Verdana is a little bit bigger font, so I might have to scale that down a little bit. Let's see what uh, 14 would look like. Okay, maybe even a little bit smaller. Let's go to 12. Now this is the default font, so if I want any of this font larger, I'll be able to select that individual piece of font and tell it to be larger, but this is going to be the default. Um, and I think I'll leave the text color defaulted to black. It's already black, so I don't necessarily need to tell it again. Um, <clears throat> also there is a top and a left margin. I know those look blank, but there's a default in there, so if I wanted to change that, since I'm having this page center, I might put zero in there and apply and you'll see it sort of my page. I don't know if you saw that, but it's snapped over to the right to the left hand border there. But when it goes to the browser it centers, so that'll make it center accurately. There's also a little margin at the top, and if I wanted to take that out, I could put a zero in, or if I wanted to change it to something other than um, the default, I could put that number in and that would change it. I think I'll just take that out for now. So anytime you see one of these blank fields, just the fact that it's blank does not mean um, that it's zero. If you want zero, you need to put zero in. Okay. All right, so now I've changed some of the uh, defaults here. And that's all I'm going to change for now. Uh, I just wanted you to be able to see that. We'll talk about background image in a later tutorial. I'm going to click OK. Um, and that uh, 
little dialog box, it wrote these things down up here in the head of my document and it wrote it using CSS. So you can see um, I just went to all the way to code view and uh, if you're new to HTML don't worry too much about this but I just wanted you to kind of get an idea of where this stuff is getting recorded. So it's saying hey for the whole body use these properties. Okay, So I got background color, the margins are written there and then it says Hey, for the body and any uh, cells, use this um, font type and font size, and that will take care of the defaults for me. Okay, thanks for watching, and in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about taking our layout that we've created and turning it into a template.